So also joining us now is Ayan Hersey Ali, research fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Ayan, thank you very much for, for being here. Um, I, I saw you nodding a bit when he was saying that about what has happened on college campuses. This is certainly something that you have spoken about very often and written about very often. You know, what goes through your mind uh, from your own upbringing and where you see this situation now? Um, well, Martha, thank you very much uh, for having me. We are living in, um, we're going through a moment of crisis, and I don't know how big uh, this crisis, I don't want to be one of those people who talk about World War III, mm -hmm. but I want to tell you a little bit about my upbringing and what is most relevant for what is going on now is I was a Muslim girl as a teenager in Kenya, and the fact that I identified as a Muslim was a given until in the mid-1980s, a movement came into our schools and our streets and our homes and our mosques. And it was the Muslim Brotherhood movement, but there were others. And we were taught not only to worship God the way we used to or the way we thought we used to, all of that was wrong, but we were given a purpose. We were given the purpose of hating the infidels and the Jews and we were told that our uh, main uh, reason for being here was to conquer the infidels, conquer infidel lands, kill them. And for those of us, like, you know, girls, teenage girls who are not supposed to go to the battlefield, we were supposed to sit together and pray. And I remember sitting with men and women and, you know, during the Ramadan and the imam leading the prayer to destroy the Jews, to destroy Israel, to destroy the infidels. That's what is relevant in my youth. And what's hopeful, I think, about my story and my life story is that hate, even though it was really intense and centered in religion, it can be unlearned. It can be unlearned. We just have to make an effort. You're right, you're right obviously, and no one knows it more than you do, um, having been taught, you know, indoctrinated, however you would say it, about hatred. And you can hear it. I, I listened, I watched the Hamas video, and it's, the atrocities are unbelievable. But one of the most deeply disturbing parts of the, the video that I saw was these Hamas terrorists calling home and saying to their parents, you would be so proud of me. I just killed 10 Jews with my, with my own hands. And the parents yeah. cheering and crying, the mother, and saying, I wish I could be there with you to celebrate with you, Ayan. Yeah. It's sickening, but it's real. And again, as a child, when I attended mosque and I, when I went to the madrasa or the Islamic school where this stuff was taught, I am ashamed to say I may have reacted like those parents. And I would have been one of those people who's cheering this hatred on. And I call on all decent Muslim human beings to come out and to get rid of this cancer that is within that culture, within that religion. I left the religion. I had a moment of moral clarity after 9-11, and it was a crossroads. Do I choose, you know, th this? I was in the Netherlands at the time, this civilization that's all about life and cherishing life, or do I stay with this uh, creed that says we love death? And the thing about Hamas is they don't care about the children of Gaza. They don't care about the Palestinians. They don't care about the women. For them, they're just cannon fodder because the hatred that they believe in is so deep, so religious, and so purposeful. And that is the thing that we, all of us, have to wake up to. You know, you, when you look at the big picture, I mean, it, clearly Hamas knew that they were going to incite an enormous response from Israel because of the level of brutality here, didn't they? They did. And again, I'm telling you, there are three now. Israel has three things going at this point. There's the immediate war of defeating Hamas militarily, and then obviously having to answer the question of what are we going to do next. But the real war, that is the war for hearts and minds. It is the war because you don't want the next generation to be programmed fully with this hatred. 
And so what we can do, the American government, the European government, Arab governments even, who were, you know, just before 7 October, were busy normalizing relationships with That's Israel. Right. The one thing to do is to name this cancer and to come out and say, we're not going to do this to the next generation. That is the real, real work that You're we have so to right. cut. And we can't do that unless we defend our own civilization. I was nodding when the student was talking about yes. diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are planting our own, a different kind of cancer in destroying our own civilization. Let us get rid of the woke revolution. Let's wake up to it. We can't fight with radical political Islam the ideology that Hamas believes in, if we start indulging in this self-hatred that's been going on for years now on our campuses and in our governments, on our streets and in our media. Yeah. If, if I could get a, a quick response to this, Ayan. This is from the UAE, um, from the head of foreign affairs there, and this was released today. And he says the accords, the Abraham Accords, are our future. We want everyone to acknowledge and accept that Israel is there to exist and that the roots of Jews, Christians, are not in New York or Paris, but here in our region. They are part of our history and they should be part of our future. Your, your response to that? I applaud it. I love yeah. that man for saying that. Mm -hmm. he, is, he has courage. And the courage yeah. of his conviction is now, those are the words. Now let's follow it through with the action. Let's start getting into what is it we are teaching in schools? What is going on on the media platforms? What's going on in our universities? Let's answer those questions. And I think the UAE particularly has done a great job of that. I think when the UAE went and said, we're going to normalize their elites, their leaders, the people who govern them, they have made that commitment in making it true. To an, a lesser extent, Saudi Arabia is doing that. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that? Saudi yes. Arabia has decided to normalize relations with Israel. That's a big deal. And, and I think one of the and most I interesting things right now... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, I think it's fascinating that you, you can sense that they're trying to hold on to it. And they're trying to go back to that moment just a few weeks ago. And if Saudi Arabia and the UAE can be successful at that, it will be um, it will minimize Iran uh, on the world stage, which, of course, is the last thing that they want to see happen. Ayan, thank you very much. I hope you'll come back. We, we, we really um, it, it's so helpful to hear from you. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Martha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.